Hey guys, welcome back to the third installment of the 0 to 2400 CR series, where we take a completely fresh account with no achievements um, and try and grind it to elite, um, only using LFG. So, uh, I think the gear progression here varies a lot. And just a side note for anyone who is, you know, interested in, you know, the gearing and stuff like that, um, we largely were looking for um, upgrading the main pieces first, then the side pieces, and obviously the weapon as well. We did a couple of RBGs, did a lot of twos as well on the side, and we sort of pick up where we left off, which is about 1.8k CR. Um, I think there might have been one or two games that we lost, um, but yeah, we, we didn't seem to do too badly. I think I was actually high CR at one point before, and I think this is exactly where we hit 1800. Um, so I'm in Mars pretty good, but uh, I'm not sure about our CR. Um, and a big point here is that this was kind of filmed over, I think it was like, uh, the last video, which will be in this video, last clip, which will be in this video, um, was from about five days ago. And then this clip where we just started at 1800, um, is from almost about a week and like about 10 days ago, 11 days ago. So it wasn't something that happened overnight. It wasn't something that, that was necessarily too quick. Um, it took a while and yeah, we, we, we're going to kind of see the, the variance there. I'm not sure if I have all the clips here. I've got the majority of the clips where we actually went up rating, but, um, if there are some gaps, you know, uh, I'm going to try and probably do more of these off stream because trying to pull this stuff off stream and organize it for everything else is a huge editing, editing hassle. Um, especially when we're pushing the last kind of doing the last couple of sections. Um, but I will, at the end of this video, give you an update on where we got to, uh, over the last, I guess, 10 days worth of gear right now, as we're starting this first game, we are at a uh, 34 K HP. Um, so when I hit 1800, I wasn't too concerned with, um, I guess the, the comp element of things. I was sort of just interested in trying as many different comps as possible, getting the experience in. Um, and with something like Boomy Warrior, um, it's good with a Paladin, but with a Shaman, uh, I feel like it's, it, it's probably something a bit left to be desired here. Um, we didn't, I think, do too bad with this session, to be honest. Like, this is probably the first time I've been looking at this in a long time. Uh, but I think we didn't do too insanely well either. Uh, I think generally with the Shaman, you really got to play kind of like all of you guys have to play pretty well with rotating your defenses because he doesn't have those crazy saves that um that like a a h power has right so you got to be kind of economical with how you use your cooldowns and obviously because he's was i think he was not bad gear he was like 220 um but at this point i'm still 226 um my druid is i think about 215 uh, so it's not the best setup you know it's not what not what you ideally want to go through um, I think what we struggled with and what you'll what most of you guys will tend to struggle with um, playing sort of cast a warrior at lower CRs will be melee cleaves. Uh, I think the best way to sort of beat melee cleaves is obviously to pump insane damage, but try and use your intervene and um, parry to try and peel and add like another layer of defense uh, to your team. Um, intervene and parry essentially against a melee cleave is like Bob but no one takes damage. You only take like cleave damage. Uh, it's, it really negates a lot of that pressure coming out and with good rotation of it. Uh, ideally you kind of want to want to wait for your shaman or like your healer to use their defenses before you use it. And a lot of the times I didn't do that. Something I sort of learned with no comms getting used to that, uh, because you're just not going to have the, the ability to kind of coordinate that as nicely as you need to do. Um, and yeah, like I didn't find, I don't find playing with Boomkins too interesting. Uh, I tend to find it kind of boring playstyle. Um, it's very damp or, you know, you get a random one shot and dampening games. It's, it's why melee cleave is like what I would say is the most optimal way to push as a melee. Uh, one, because it's strong, but two, because you have no comms, it's really hard to get a setup on LFG and, and get the value that you need to. Uh, from 
you know, um, playing melee caster. Like melee caster is good because you can set up things and play defensively, switch into the offensive, stuff like that. Kind of peel for each other. You have CC, all this good stuff. Uh, but it's it's a lot more difficult for you to live and beat other cleaves. The other thing, it's slow games. Like this game here, it's already three minutes. As a melee cleave versus melee cleave, this game would probably be over in the first like. 20, 30 seconds, you just, you've just done it and you're, you're finished for the night. So big thing for, for any of my warriors out there, which, you know, the majority of the people watching these videos, um, I would try and avoid playing too much melee caster unless you actually have comms ready and set up for it. Just because it becomes so much more difficult to, to do that properly, um, and, and coordinate. But as you can see here, this is what I mean. You know, we play a four minute game for the turbo just to set up on us and uh, not really set up. They just, they just kept doing damage and we slowly died. And our first 1800 game, we lose. And now it's 1790 and we'll skip a, a bit into the, the last few games and give you an update on how these go. So I, th I realized in, in this queue session, we literally only played three games and it took like 40 minutes. One, because we were queuing really late at night, but also... Uh, each game was like five or six minutes each. Um, so this game was against a Aflock um, Balanced Druid, where, you know, we sort of, I don't know, we're doing, we weren't doing too badly, and, and we slowly get this kill here, uh, but it takes ages, and it's like a really painful game where we're just dampening, we're just running the whole time. And then while I'm upstairs, like, I kind of got both of them low, and I was like, I can't get back up there, and somehow my Druid peaked up, and and blasted him out. But um, yeah, we, we kind of went, we went back to 1800 and then, you know, I think if we skip a little bit deeper, um, I was, I it wasn't 40 minutes, it was 20 minutes. But we get our first RMP game, which uh, I will actually go through because RMP is one that people have to, a, bit, a bit of struggle with. I always try and blade storm the opener against this because it lets me get the initiative and I blade storm here. Um, yeah, I kind of stop a lot of this stuff here. I fear the mage just so we can't get this poly um, and stun this this rogue. So I, I went rogue here for a little bit. I'm not sure if I went in the whole game. Um, I think a big mistake I made against a lot of these rogue games um, when I was low gear was kind of playing like I'm fully geared because <laughs> on my main warrior, like I don't die that quickly. I can kind of play this aggressive. So one thing I had to adjust when moving to the lower gear warrior is is really focusing a lot more on positioning and where I was standing against rogue mage, making sure I'm in D stance enough, all this kind of good stuff. So I switched into D stance for this go. Um, I tried to get the banner down, which didn't really get too much. And yeah, it still didn't get us too far. And we see here, like, the rogue, the rogue sort of just kiting us. I'm doing, like, negative damage to them. The rogue evasions, which is good for us. But, yeah, we're just having this trouble where, like, nothing. All of them are 100, on 100%. We're trying to connect something here. Um, the mage is going to get a poly here, and I throw the disarm as that happens. And, and I think I'm even ready to intervene. I reflect the mind games here, too. So we have everything set up pretty nicely, but I don't know if it's enough. I'm getting regrowth by my druid and we just live there. We just live there. Even with 70% HP, we're at, we're at 20, 27k. Um, so it's super, super dicey. Not, not necessarily the best uh, kind of feeling when, when you're 70% HP and your health is in the 20s. Definitely after moving from a 40k tune, it's hard to deal with. Um, and I think the issue with a lot of these RM games is just like the, the amount of coordination that they have to do is kind of minimal, but, um, when you have no comms and have to like rotate trinkets and defensives, sometimes that can be really, really difficult. Uh, luckily for us, I think we did pretty well here. I'm not sure if we win or lose this judging by the fact that rogue has no trinket and all this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm thinking that we win here, uh, but not a hundred percent sure. Um, we fear, and <laughs> that was the worst fear. Instead of doing the focus fear on the, on the priest, cause I know the priest on focus. I just fear the rogue by accident. Um, so, you know, mistakes can happen to the best of us. I put this banner down more even in an offensive manner. Cause I want to really push here. 
Um, the rogue has almost nothing. The priest just has um, like 6k mana. Um, I'm not sure if it was a good... Like, I'm pretty sure... It's like one of those things. Like, if the banner gets something, it's a good banner. But if it gets nothing, it's a bad banner. And I don't think that was the best banner for me. <laughs> um, the rogue's really, really low, though. And yeah, I think he's sort of in this death range here. We try and reflect the poly, which I thought was on me because he was casting them on, on me before. And I'm not sure if this rogue dies or... Yeah, okay. We get the kill here, which would have been really big Sag if we didn't. Um, but even then, a long grindy game. We are able to get past that 1800 mark and push ahead though. And I think that's where uh, like our, our shaman leaves. I don't, yeah, the shaman just randomly logs off, which is uh, you know kind of typical... Typical LFG chaplains, I think, now. Yeah, unfortunately. So, yeah, we'll hop into the next game. Maybe we'll do the next ones a bit shorter and tighter just because I don't want to use too much of this video. Okay, fortunately for us, we are able to maintain some level of continuity. Um, I was able to find a clip that was next after this. Um, it's a bit of a bit, bit of kind of soul searching there when because, like, they're not necessarily in, like, a nice chronological order when I... Uh, put in all the clips so um i think here we pick up a ellie shaman i think it's an ellie shaman and a h pal i originally thought this ellie shaman was inch and it, like enhancement and i was like this is going to be the easiest thing in the world um, but i think we didn't do too bad so first game we get is uh against the bounce druid aflock which is definitely a tilter. Um, it's like one of those games that, you know, it lasts so long or it feels like at least it lasts so long that uh, you really don't want to lose these ones. And I think we fortunately didn't do too badly. And um, we were able to like force out the kill kind of slowly without even getting to, to sort of that three minute mark. Um, but I remember still feeling like this game was, was insanely hard. And with something like Turbo, oh, sorry, with... Um, with Thundercleave, the games are pretty long. You, you do want to get that nice setup. Um, you kind of want to rotate those stuns around. And obviously the hardest thing you're going to find uh, is versing the um, those big freaking uh, melee cleaves, which, which we're going to see in a second. So uh, our first sort of struggle here, um, which is against the melee cleave, it's just an awkward, awkward game. Um, I'm sort of thinking I can live through this and I do parry, but we're just using so many buttons every time. Um, every time anything happens, I have to play pretty defensive here. And whenever we push in, it's just, um, they've got so much pressure coming out of every go, whereas we're sort of always on the back foot. Um, so we're playing pretty decently. I, I don't think any of us were playing too badly here. Uh, but you know, definitely could have improved some of our, some of our goes with with comms and stuff like that. Um, I do feel like again, like what I said before, playing with a playing with a caster is definitely amped so much more with communication, just because you get to to coordinate so much more and put like actual pressure down, get stuff lined up not waste all your drs all this kind of stuff call for off heels um here we sort of slowly try and like run away we're able to live barely um but they've just got so much pressure and i'm just like running which is never like whenever you're running as a warrior you know it's uh you know it's probably not a good time it's probably time to call that q session uh off for a little bit <laughs> because it's just not not the most enjoyable experience for sure um it's it, with something like uh, ellie as well you're getting so baited because it gets so close to dying from the ellie burst and like over and over again but then sometimes they just don't have the kill potential especially if they're not super geared i can't remember what gear this guy had i think at around this rating though most people had about 220 um, because if you know their mains are at, at rival, they've had a couple weeks of getting getting a decent box, getting decent rewards. So it's it's not too bad, but uh, yeah, definitely felt like we could have um, you know been a bit smarter with the, with the comps. And I think by the end of it, when I started to to really want to push, I, I moved over to playing largely melee cleave. <laughs> Um, just getting frustrated of, about how long these games were going for and, and, um, 
Yeah, I, I think if if I was to recommend anything though, I think if you can get comms with a melee cleave as well, uh, you're going to be in such a good spot because even this melee cleave, like an 1800, this turbo, it somehow doesn't feel too different to the, the higher rated turbos. I'm like, they still do everything pretty well. There's no like visible huge mistakes you can see in the same way that um, you see when you verse like an 1800 RMP. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. It's it's still a lot easier to execute turbo than it is to execute something like Thunder Cleave. Uh, and it's it's like you have off heels from the, the enhancement, which help a lot, all this kind of good stuff. And every, every ascendance is just like, your your balls drop you know <laughs> and here like we're just kiting we pre-kited the ascendance as well but it's just not enough sometimes you know just not enough to secure down that kill uh unfortunately also storm bolted because he lassoed um which meant the storm bolt was completely wasted we're just trying to kite as much as possible and yeah we we get finished off by a big condemn there which is uh which is pretty sad so we actually played with this team for about two hours and we did pretty well. Like we were go definitely going up rating, but again, we kind of got to that 1900, 1950 MMR bracket, I think, uh, where you are kind of hard stuck and limited by versing a lot of cleaves that just have their brain switched on and, and know how to pump. <laughs> and definitely something we found, uh, you know, when we got, when we got, um, the, the caster cleaves we were just winning and every melee cleave was like really difficult even when i was rotating everything i think one thing i probably could have done here is just go on and let the the ellie shaman kite and just try and solo the paladin um with condemn instead of sitting in cleave something that i kind of think you know you can kind of help and peel your your shaman a lot more when you're um when you're coordinating stuff and like get it, like make you force him to kite, but if he's sitting there and eating the damage, you're kind of sitting there and eating the damage too. But both this paladin and this Ellie Shaman, like they're, they're good dudes. They, they went and sat through a two hour queue. They didn't leave or anything. And I think we just kind of called it here cause uh, you know, it'd been quite a while and, and we'd done a pretty good push. So as it was, so at this point, at the end of this two hours, I think we ended at 1950 MMR with, with 20, 30, MMR, sorry, 1940 CR. So we pick back up with a, um, let me just skip a little bit into this so that battle shout isn't in. Uh, we pick back up with a Resto Druid um, DK Venthyr uh, TSG um, versing, I think it's Miss Jones, No Man's, and Paladin, who I'm not sure who that is. Um, <laughs> this is. An interesting comp, I think, because yeah, we we just have a lot of like I don't know, we we sort of kind of struggle to to kill a lot of things quickly, but then um when we line stuff up, like the, the consistent damage was really there. And this DK was really good, and I found out sort of afterwards he was he was like two point six, two point seven K on his main. Um so did get lucky there because he was trying to farm farm some honor too. Um, definitely, definitely he was, you know, you can kind of tell when someone just knows what to do. Um, and the druid wasn't too bad, but I think he was, he was considerably lower. He lied on his LFG <laughs> and said he was uh, 1950 CR. And then when we invited him, he was actually, I think 1750 or maybe 1850 CR, which is just natural, natural in LFG. And I think this game goes for quite a while. So I'm just going to skip a little bit in. Just because I feel like TSG always looks the same. Um, one big thing against RMP in general, especially as a cleave, is that you have to realize that you do win if you just stop their goes and play defensive. Your consistent damage is just usually so much higher, um, but good defensive play is, is almost the most important thing in RMP. But that's not to say you shouldn't play aggressive at all. If you don't play aggressive, they will just keep resetting and getting more and more buttons. And as you can see, sort of when I feel like they don't have a go, I'm pushing in as hard as possible. The way you can kind of tell they have a go or not is, is one, the DRs and your healer, you know, whether Rogue has blind, his position, all this kind of stuff. But um, also like your stun DRs. So when you are off stun DR 
uh, it's kind of you could be primed for a go. Um, when you are on stun DR, you're a lot more scared. But here, I was able to kind of destance before the stun, um, and we and we get the pressure back towards us. Having the the DK groupy hands as well really disrupts them. And then because it's an arcane mage, I think it's a bit more consistent damage. Um, but in terms of kind of actual burst in the huge like double stun window where you really need to kill something uh, it really wasn't th it really wasn't there i think we might have chased the rogue a bit too much as well i feel like we probably could have killed the mage at any point because he'd blocked <coughs> um the pally was running out of tools though and i think the big thing here was just kind of making sure that no one died if we skip a little bit deeper in here as well this game went for so long actually was like a two, tw four minute game, real big dampener. Um, where, you know, essentially they just, I think their, their strategy changed into just trying to global um, the, what's it called? Globaling a druid. So in, in that case, you just want to play as defensive as possible, peel the druid, the druid's mana is looking great. The paladin's on like 9k mana. Um, the rogue throws a, uh, blind on me which you know means that it's going to get serious on your healer he's going to have to start to run run and kite you know um skipping a little bit deeper because this game just goes on forever uh, it's five minutes into this game now um and yeah i actually remember this pr pretty vividly just being super bored here uh we kind of get a bit tired and i guess too aggressive here but <clears throat> he's not able to punish me too much so being B stands and behind the pillar, we get the aim Z down. Um, we just have so many tools as TSG to kind of stop them, whereas they don't have the same thing for us. Um, the sack sort of comes out here. This this rogue is really, really taking it. He's got no trinket and he slowly falls over. And um, definitely, yeah, that was a 1964. Um, and we're at 2KCR there. So by the time you'll see this video, I'll probably work out where those clips are. Um, so going a little bit deeper in here, um, I had a lot of gifted subs from viewers this, this stream. I don't know how much longer we play with this druid. No, I think the druid bailed. Yeah. Cause he, he wasn't accepting the cue. So we went back in LFG, we found a hedge pal and, um, this is, I think where we started to really pump, uh, we were really destroying a lot of windwalker tears, like, cause we kept getting other cleaves and TSG is so good into other cleaves. Uh, we were just getting free rating. It was it was insane. It was really good. Um, I think the harder thing for like a TSG like this would be maybe like a Kyrian TSG, uh, with where he gets big blade storms because your single target kind of doesn't necessarily always match up. Um, but we were doing really good damage here too. I think um, at this point our gear had improved a little bit, um, and yeah, we we were finding it pretty easy to, to start to push that rating up and, and really get get further ahead there. And then I think the DK bailed at some point and we found a demon hunter. Again, um, there's actually this exact clip. Like I'm gonna go find it for you. Um, let me not spoil anything. But here, cause I had uh, two people sign up must have been before this i had like a um really geared one and like a less geared one but i picked the less geared one even though it's like one eye level different no the, the other dude had high cr i think and this dude had lower cr but he had xp on the same character <clears throat> on his main which is ideally what you always want when you see that like xp doesn't mean anything but current cr on the same character that they have on the account means a lot. And you should really prioritize kept people who have like a, you know, if they're like 2,400 on demon hunter and then they're 2k on their second demon hunter, they're going to play really well. Um, I wouldn't say this necessarily extends to other classes because you can be like 3k to warrior and be like a 1.8k warlock. Cause you've just never played warlock. So big thing to take into consideration. And this Demon Hunter and I, we actually, like, did really well. Um, we were doing really well to, like, rotate cooldowns. Um, this was sort of midway through the push. We versed some pretty high-rated people. Uh, I think this is Shaman Extreme. And then I Got Cake was Rio. 
not sure who the H pal is. Um, and we were doing pretty well against these types of comps. Like it felt like, um, while there was some like times that we just got randomly one shot, um, I was able to sort of work with him on his kit and like he was kiting really well too. And in these damp games, we just had so much more like <clears throat> ability to pressure. Um, I'd never played the DH warrior comp like seriously and playing it now, um, with like a semi, uh, sort of high DH on his alt felt really good. Felt really, really good. Um, this is why like, you know, don't necessarily always pick meta comps like DH warrior isn't meta. Um, but it worked really well for us because this dude obviously knew how to play his class and that's almost more important than just like picking an enhancement shaman just because you know you think enhancement shaman's always better um but yeah with this guy we're able to to do quite well and <clears throat> i think also because people at this rating weren't used to demon hunter cleaves too um they're probably really really used to uh the what's it called you know turbo and these other cleaves um, versing something like a demon hunter cleave is probably sort of out of the blue. Um, and the burst from demon hunters, how you sort of have to rotate and play around their cooldowns, um, is kind of difficult. Like it's actually like when I verse them on my main, I oftentimes don't know what to do and, uh, hunt really, really scares me, but also they've got stuff like reverse. Um, so when they, when they reverse like a, a big hodge, they can turn, turn a game around pretty quickly, but they can also, you know give a huge amount of defensive utility with darkness, double darkness if they want to, all this kind of stuff. Um, but again, like this game went for six minutes, which is insane. I think a lot of it was because I, like a lot of these games go for so long cause I'm under geared. Um, and yeah, like being under gear just gives you such a bad, like, uh, like it makes the games just go longer, even if you rotate your cooldowns well. But here we, this was a game that I think was one off a uh, twenty one hundred, and then um, we do lose, I think two, and we, yeah, I don't know if we lose, win the win the other one. All right, boys, this is the duelist game, the duelist game, really really hype. Um, Arms warrior H pal Ellie Thunder versus. DHH Power Warrior. Um, it's our boy Metaphors. Uh, this game also goes for a while, um, but it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy because we get really, really low and they get really, really low and it's just back and forth nonstop. Uh, I'm going to skip in a little bit too, just because I don't want this video to be like 40 minutes long. <laughs> um, we, against Thunder, like I don't really know what to do as much. Um, I don't think metaphors mains this. I don't think the warrior is like a really high rated DK. So it's like no one's mains. So, um, I think they're, they're probably not a hundred percent used to versing the, uh, the big DH warrior either. Um, but we're, we're able to get pretty decent spread damage. They're setting up their stuff quite nicely as well. Um, with the, the storm bot on me and the lasso on the kill target, which I think is pretty good. Um, but here we are able to slowly kind of create a lot of pressure, but against Thunder, they can always turn it around. So we'll just skip it a little bit longer because it's more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. <laughs> um, we get to the point here where Mana, like, I think they are ahead of us on Mana by a little bit. Well, they're kind of equal on Mana. But obviously, if you see his cooldowns, he's got Stormkeep coming pretty soon he's got lasso coming pretty soon um a dh blurs there and yeah there's there's a hodge which he which he's able to reflect really quickly and hunt back um which is awesome for us but um yeah it's looking really good for us here i thought we had it in the bag at this point i really really did but uh unfortunately it kind of got turned around um oh i may have skipped in a little bit too much I didn't know how much longer it was, but a paladin gets put into CC and I I kill metaphors and they kill the DH. So it's cross kill. Um, because he's Kyrian and I'm Venthyr, I, even with the like 3k, 4k HP disadvantage, I'm pretty sure we have like a bit of an advantage. Um, just generally, we just, I think 
vent is so much better into this and my uh my paladin has all his buttons so i don't know what that was there he like hodged him oh no he just yeah, he just hodged him first i thought uh he somehow like reflected a hodge into himself um but here like the warrior just kind of got stuck there i don't know if he just gave up because he couldn't be fucked because yeah we he gets stunned here i don't know if he dc's or like it's just like whatever um because his paladin runs out of stuff and he sort of comes back at that point um but yeah from that able to sort of proc out that win get the 2100 get the duelist for the season so what do we have next um i'm gonna try and find that 1800 to like the the 1940 to 2k games i think i know where i have them um because we did some some ellie uh, sorry some turbo off stream and some turbo on stream so if anyone on twitch remembers anyone watching the streams can remember what day we did that let me know i'll go search for those maybe i'll put those up separately um just because i want to get this video out tonight <laughs> So guys, we we only have 300 rating left, but these are 300 hard points to get. So we're going to be gearing. We're going to get all our 226 gear because we are duelists now. We're going to be doing RBGs, going to be doing BGs, going to be doing twos. <laughs> Weird sound at the end. I just burped. Um, let me know if you guys want to come do some RBGs because we're not doing the LFG thing via RBGs. So hit me up. Because uh, maybe we'll do some stream RBGs. It'll be a lot of fun. Follow the stream, guys, if you enjoy this type of content. If you enjoy watching this LFG challenge. If you have any questions. I'm going to try and upload these way more regularly. So I don't have to do so much cutting and editing. And I can just go through the, the game slowly. Um, especially because we, we sort of went from 0 to 21, 2100 in like 3 episodes. Um, so it would be good to get the last couple episodes to, to be long. Um, it kind of sucked to just have, you know, 2100 to 2400 and then, all right, guys, bye. I want to break this down more for you. Um, I'm going to do a quick rundown of the gear I've got and then we'll call it a vid. All right, boys, gear update. So we are at 217 level now. The start of this video, you saw us at 206. The goal is, oh, we also got this trinket from the vault. 226 duelist badger ferocity very nice um goal is at the moment get rid of this we have uh 575 conquest at the moment so we'll be um upgrading this this bad boy i think the other thing i'll try and do is i'll upgrade my conduits this one um crash the ramparts to the 14 percent version uh, and then i'll probably look at upgrading my ring and cape as well but these are pretty good um it's a huge amount of honor but we actually almost are full 220 on everything so you know obviously you have to upgrade like the, the trinket and stuff but this doesn't really make too much of a big difference um we're at 30 percent verse we got 16 percent crit with this thing and we got six percent haste um it's it's not the best stats but it's kind of fun with this build my plan is to play a lot of cleaves to get that final rating to um 2400 and yeah i will probably have to change the name after this video obviously just like we do after every video um and you guys can suggest some good names in the comments as well all right guys hope you enjoy the quick gear breakdown as well thanks for all the support check the patreon out if you're interested in more coaching stuff um and obviously follow support subscribe love you all bye bye